or nine judges. I'll talk about that a little bit later, but I'll just say that there's only one rule, we can only hear one case uh, at the time. You're going to see here that we're in the dead center of the court in terms of the line, in terms of height, width. You're going to actually see windows inside the middle of the court, and so we have two boards on each side, and the light come in during daytime. So we're here sitting as the public galleries when the court is in session, and if any member of the public can come in and watch the case. You can come in an hour late, an hour early, whatever you like, without any outs and whatnot. It's on a first come, first served basis. On some very high profile cases, all this is going to be filled up. The outside of the court, in the grand hall, the big hall that we have, there's going to be tons of chairs, TVs, the two federal courtrooms will be open, you're going to have a case, line, so everyone can watch. If you can't come in person, you're going to see here in the big back of the room, you see these two big cameras on each side. You're also going to see these cameras under each television. And all the cases at the Supreme Court of Canada are webcast live on our website. So if you want to watch any case, you're more than welcome uh, to watch <coughs> on our website. Also, the lawyer's factors. The way it works for the Supreme Court is that each lawyer, each party, is going to submit a big factum to the Supreme Court. Again, all the arguments are elaborated inside the factum. Those are also published on the website. So you can watch the case, you can read the factum, so you really follow everything that is happening. Once the decision is made, we're going to go ahead and publish it on our website. On this side here, the big long bench, big long left story is for the journalists and media. They can take a seat, they can use laptops, they have access to the Wi Fi and the internet. And on this side here, this long bench, all the cables sticking out is where the law clerks sit. And so each judge has three law clerks, so a total of 27 individuals who help. Supreme Court of Canada. The way it works is they just graduated law school, and on the last year, uh, before you become a lawyer, you have to article. In other words, you have to write work for a lawyer, work for a court, work for a law firm. And so here they're actually working for the court, and they help, do, they help writing on a lot of the decisions, doing a lot of research for the judges. And so one law firm per judge will assist and help watch the case and take their notes. This side here is for the appellants. The first thing is going to be well, uh, person who's going to be appealing to the Supreme Court, they're going to argue an error of made was an error of law was made in previous instances. On this side here, we have the respondent, the person who's responding to the appeal, essentially arguing that no error of law was made. We do not want to overturn the decision. Anyone addressing the court must stand here at the podium. This allows us to have the cameras in front, but also a webcast, also the microphones for recording. And the way it works is the Appellant has one hour, the respondent has one hour, and after the appellant has five minutes after the concludes. It's very, very short with the Supreme Court. These seats here in the back are reserved for interviews. And so let's say we have a very, very big case of public importance. It will most likely affect other individuals, other companies, other provinces in Canada. By example, BC, they were passing legislation for the right to die bill, and so pretty much allowing individuals. Uh, or handicapped and went on to have assisted suicide. They came all over the Supreme Court. However, the province of Quebec was also had very, very, very similar legislation inside of their legislature. And so Quebec was able to intervene on the case, address the court for 10 minutes, and give them the chance to speak about this case that has such an impact on the very same law they were writing. It's a very, very simple example, but let's say we have a criminal case. You might have like 13 provinces and territories. You might have then, you know, a, a civil liberties associations. You might have attorney generals. You might have interest groups uh, coming to the court and addressing the court for 10 minutes. You have to submit an application, whatnot. Uh, in all, you have to bring new arguments to the court and explain how this affects you. Anyway, it's all to say, the debaters sit here, and behind us are nine chairs, four or nine judges. As you realize, there's nowhere for the jury, because again, only questions of law, nor for the accused. Again, no witnesses, right? No one's going to be testifying. But also, you're going to see, you know, after cases or criminal cases, there's no cage for the accused, there's no box they can sit in. The accused, in most cases, is going to be also in the public gallery. In. And so, in the Supreme Court of Canada, this hearing case, you're the judges and the lawyers are wearing those black robes, the same black robes we had in the trial instance. Uh, sorry, some of the rules we had in the federal court of appeal. You're going to see here the Chief Justice, Beverly McLaughlin, will stay seat in the middle, and to the left, we have the most senior judge at the time was Justice Bennett. To the right, second most senior Justice Fish. And to the second right, Justice Abella. The third right, the second right, Justice Rossi and so on. In other words, it says Chief Justice, most senior, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth, thirteenth, fourteenth, fifteenth, sixteenth, seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, twentieth, twenty-first, twenty-second, twenty-third, twenty-fourth, twenty-fifth, twenty-sixth, twenty-seventh, twenty-eighth, twenty-ninth, twenty-tenth, twenty-eleventh, twenty-twelfth, twenty-thirteenth, twenty-fourteenth, twenty-fifteenth, twenty-sixteenth, twenty-seventeenth, twenty-eighteenth, twenty-nineteenth, twenty-twentieth, twenty-twenty-first, twenty-twenty-second, twenty-twenty-third, twenty-twenty-fourth, twenty-twenty-fifth, twenty-twenty-sixth, twenty-twenty-seventh, twenty-twenty-eighth, twenty-twenty-ninth, twenty-twenty-tenth, twenty-twenty-eleventh, twenty-twenty-twelfth, twenty-twenty-thirteenth, twenty-twenty-fourteen
Association of Petroleum Producers. Marta E. Burns, Michael Sutton, <coughs> Jeffrey W. A. Moore, and Monica Johnson for the Intervenor Attorney General of Alberta. Warren J. A. Mitchell, Ian Gamble, Lee Plumridge for the Intervenor Tolco Industries. I'm going to pause it here since the case can last about three to four hours. I don't have enough time to watch the whole case. As I mentioned, it's all available on our website. It's more than welcome to go watch this case if you're interested. As soon as they're done hearing the case, the court is going to make a decision. There's two options they have. They can either give the case right on the bench. Uh, I disagree, no appeal allowed, no legal allowed. You can say I agree, I agree with the Court of Appeal, same concept, nothing. You can say the accused guilty, not guilty, sentence, change sentence, modified. Or what they do for almost all the cases is they're going to go ahead and deliberate. They're going to go actually right down to the doors and they're going to go in what's called a judge's deliberation chamber. Inside of this room here, it's very, very simple. It's a big room. There's a round table with nine chairs where nine judges will sit around this table and discuss about the case. But the judgments do not have to be unanimous. We don't have to have a nine versus zero. We can have actually uh, an eight versus one. We can have a seven versus two. We can have a five versus four. And we're actually going to publish both of the cases. So, so in those cases, we have a majority of five, a dissident of four. And so this is in this room where we make this tentative decision. Who agrees with who and who's going to write what part of the judgment? It's all inside of this room. Only the nine judges are allowed inside of this room when they are deliberating. Sometimes the deliberation sessions can be hours and hours, where you know, five, six hours to deliberate. And so on the side, we also have a coffee table with other chairs, and so they make their way through. We're going to be pretty much the same as you until it forms a sort of tentative agreement between, mm -hmm. uh, between the judges. Any questions so far about the board? Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I missed it. Did you, did you say what the what website was? The website, uh, it's uh, scc-csc.gc.ca, uh, but if you just go on Google for Supreme Court of Canada, it's going to be the one with .gc.ca. Okay, great. It's going to be all orange, orange and green. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to about the judges right now. We only have about a few minutes left. And so we are created, we are created in 1875. We are first case in 1876. We have six judges, and we actually have tied decisions. We can have three versus three decisions. And so what we're going to do is if we have, when we're created, so we're not Canada's highest striking. If you want to appeal, you can appeal to the London Privy Council in London, England. So, let's say you had a tie, let's say you have four versus two, and you're still unhappy, you could go to London, England. I voted, right, in 18, 1876. Take a vote and go to England and take a vote back. If you're in Vancouver, which is all the way to British Columbia, you have to take the train, right? It's about four weeks per train, a couple weeks on the boat, hear the case, come back in the house. It's very, very long, it takes months, right? 1927, I think it's a great idea, it's about 50 years later. We're like, hey, if we have seven judges, we're gonna have an uneven number, right? So we're not going to have the fines anymore. So we're from 6 to 7 in 1927. However, you can still appeal to London. So let's say there's a big case, public importance, and you're not happy, you can still apply and go to London. Only in 1949, we become Canada's highest tribunal. In 1949, with all national appeals, we go from 7 to 9 judges, our current number today. And so since 1949, it's not possible to appeal to our decisions. You're going to see here the, the red ceremonial robes worn by the judges. They're only worn for ceremonial occasions, so official pictures, when they welcome the judges, when they assist the Senate, speech in the Senate. Uh, they look like Santa Claus and whatnot, especially, <laughs> especially this time of the year, right? Yeah. But, however, as I mentioned, you only wear them for special occasions. Mm -hmm. This is Chief Justice of Canada, and as well, Chief Justice, she holds all the administrative powers of the court. When it comes time to vote, she can't vote three times or five times or tell the court what to do. However, she gets to pick what judge hears what case. We sit in five, seven, or nine, and we always try to sit a full number of nine. Some cases we sit seven, and it's pretty rare that we sit five judges at the Supreme Court. However, it is possible that she gets to pick what judge hears what case. She also has some more administrative functions. In terms of Canada, let's say the Governor General becomes ill, she can sign laws into power uh, and whatnot. So it's I mean, pretty much more administrative functions when it comes time to vote, make the decision, it's pretty much. Uh, All right, so are there any questions on the Supreme Court of Canada or judges? Yes. Where does the 20th and the 
plaintiff and the defendant. So plaintiff and the defendant is Google this term used at the trial because it's at the bottom of the period. Once we have the appeal to the Supreme Court, we have the appellant, which would be the plaintiff. Uh, well, actually, I don't, I don't know if he says the titles can change. The like, plaintiff at this level could be the appellant, it could be the respondent. And the appellant is the person who's disagreeing with the court of appeal decision. They can appeal the decision, and the respondent is the one who is responding to the case. And so, really, this would be the plaintiff in those terms. There, there are a lot of and this would be the defendant on this side, correct? But it's just because the chain, like, by example, the accused of committing a crime, you would have the crown, which would be the plaintiff, technically, you have the defendant, which would be the individual. But however, in the appeal instance, if it's the uh, if it's the accused appealing, they're going to be called the appellant. And the defendant's going to be the plaintiff. It's, it's a little bit, but pretty much the plaintiff of the case. All right, any other questions? So, yes. so who is the responsible for that? Like the judge or the lawyer? No, it's not the judge, it's the other party. But oh, it's the that's the defendant. defendant. But no, you're right. It's so easy. even though you're like having a decision for or against the decision before, correct. the respondent is still like the yeah, correct. It, it's one. It's the party. It's one of the parties. Right? So, so, but even though you are arguing, the judge did not make a mistake. The judge cannot come to the court. That's why the judges are so detailed, right? Because they go in so much detail. Yes. For how long the judge can do Very good question. So the judges must retire at the age of seventy-five, uh, and so they're appointed for life. So they're not appointed on term or anything like that. But once they're the age of seventy-five, they must retire. In the states, by example, we have judges who are seventy, eighty years old. Uh, but here you must retire at the age of Yes? They are elected or they are? They are appointed. So they're not elected by the, by the individuals, but they're appointed by our prime minister. Okay. If you compare it to like, what we have in the states with the whole Senate approval and whatnot, he pretty much has all the discretion to appoint any lawyer with 10 years of experience into the Supreme Court. There's no Senate approval, there's no secondary approval. Yes, sir? Um, like, is there any, so you say federal court is, you know, uh, plaintiff first the government. Is there any, like, exclusivity, sort of, like there is in the states with federal government? It's strictly, like, uh, it's strictly uh, plaintiff first the government. There's no, like, patent law or something like that that can go. Correct, correct. There, there, so the rule of thumb is the individual versus the government. But correct, we do have our patents also that fall on the federal branch. Okay. There's more, a little more exceptions to, like, our criminal code. We only have one federal code, federal mm -hmm. criminal code. It's federal, however, it's actually in the provincial branch who administers it. Okay. And so a lot of the times you're gonna they go back and forth. Yeah. And the rule of thumb is correct. But if we, the biggest thing with the state is the states sometimes have can't appeal to the US Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. And so the state have exclusive jurisdiction and they can never go to the Supreme Court. However, here in Canada, a civil case from Quebec can come to the Supreme Court. Same concept from Alberta can come to the Supreme Court. Okay. So we don't have those I'm not, I forget the actual term, I think it's exclusivity or whatever. Yeah, exclusivity, yeah. Exactly, in terms of the donor. So. Okay. So go ahead, It's much more similar to the UK. It's much more similar to the UK uh, compared to the US. For sure. But we're definitely much more common, uh, common, uh, common law. For sure. We're common law and common law, for sure. Uh, there's, a lot, there's a lot of differences between both, but definitely closer to the UK. So let's actually, let's actually conclude our uh, presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me, I'll hang around. If you want to take pictures, I'm all the way up here. We just ask you to stay on this side of the court. So just please stay on this side. Uh, I'll answer all the questions. Gavin, if not, thank you for joining me. Have, uh, have a good afternoon here in Ottawa on Friday. And uh, thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs>